There's lots to discuss about Israel at the moment. We'll get to the conflict in a second. But let's start here in Australia. Now, of course, we saw the disgusting scenes earlier this week at that pro-Palestine rally in Sydney down by the Opera House. Well, today we've seen what is, for now at least, a much more peaceful one, although illegal. Sky News was there to hear from people as to why they attended. I'm Jewish and I'm here in solidarity with my Palestinian brothers and sisters because Israel is an apartheid state um, and we have to stop the genocide in Gaza. I don't believe in genocide. I'm here to um, hope that we cannot have another ethnic cleansing in Palestine. I don't believe in Israeli occupation of Gaza. Evelyn, I don't know why this rally was even allowed to go ahead. It was illegal. The, the New South Wales Premier, Chris Minns, uh, said there was no approval for it, no approval would be given. Um, but, you know, on the back of what we saw in Sydney on Monday night and then what we saw in Melbourne on Tuesday night, we're sure they didn't shout gas the Jews, but they were going around saying from the, the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, which is code for expel all the Jews and we're going to take all the land off you. How can we let this go ahead? I mean, I'm not one to normally, you know, stand in the way of free speech and protest, but there is a line must be drawn with people who've clearly proven themselves wholly anti-Semitic um, and the, the sort of people who don't deserve to be platformed. Yeah, look, I think it's a really delicate subject, to be honest. I, I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert in the Middle East and the geopolitical uh, war that's going on over there. I mean, everyone else in the country has. <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but this is a panel of experts, Evelyn. Join me. Get on. <laughs> let me just say, like, it, I found it really interesting, that particular protest that you mentioned where they were, they were yelling out, gas the Jews, kill all the Jews. Like, we've only had, I think it was, in, in certain states in our country, they're trying to ban the swastika they're trying to ban d different Nazi salutes. Well, they things. have. They, they have. Ha they've legislated it, and then you know this is just allowed to just be spilled out on the streets in in front of uh, Sydney, and you know who, who knows who was listening. What I think that was really appalling. Can I ask? But... You're a former police officer. Yes. What would you have done in that situation? Because we know that the police. <laughs> Did not, and I don't blame the cops yeah. on the ground. They're studying a really fast-moving situation. They don't know how volatile it is. They don't know what people are packing apart from flares or whatever it may be. But you've got a protest that shouldn't mm. have been there that's gone from town hall down to the opera house. Then you've got them chanting, F the Jews, gas the Jews. What, as a frontline cop, would you have done in that situation? It's really difficult. As a, as a, as a just a normal you know, one striper, constable or something in uniform who was just on the beat, you follow your orders, right? That is just what happens. So you go off what your, your sergeant would be telling you to do. But personally, like, and something that I would have, you know, liked to use discretion on is, is you police crimes, right? You, mm. That's what you police. So I'm of the belief that I don't like... I, th I think you saw that video where there was a man carrying an Israeli flag who was taken away from one of the, the protests, and it was the police sort of said, oh, we're preventing a breach of the peace. I, I don't like that type of policing because I think to myself, well, why isn't the time and effort taken in policing the people who are going to commit the crime? Mm. If someone's going to come along and assault that Israeli man or the one who's representing the, with the Israel flag, well, then the person committing the crime, that's where the police effort should be. That's where I stand on the matter. You police crimes, you don't police things that haven't happened yet. So I, I, my sort of thought is, if something like that's happening and people are committing a crime, you deal with it. The problem is numbers. If there's mm. thousands and thousands of civilians who are on the streets who are all chanting, gas the Jews, and you've got 10 police officers, it's almost impossible practically yep. to, to police that. It's a really difficult situation. And, you know, this is part of where I was going with the first question that you asked is, what do you, what do, you do in these situations? You've got to ask yourself, what are they calling for? What are they on the street calling for? Are they inciting terrorism? Are they inciting I'd violence? They are, are, they, are they inciting the abolition of Israel or death to the Jews? If that's the case, shut it down, do what you have to do. Stand that's, in the riots. Yeah, that's that's my belief. That's how it's like, asked. We have a riot for. squad for. How we've got those are people rioting. In Melbourne. <laughs> Who should we call? If yeah. you dared to, like, speak out against lockdown in Melbourne, they got the rubber bullets on well, you. Well, this like... is the problem with policing, right? And this is something that I found really difficult, is it's, it's not consistent. Because, you see, there, there's... 
always plenty of police to lock up grandma not wearing a mask on the mm. bench in the park during COVID. You know, there, there were plenty of yeah. police who, who would have kicked me if I was at five kilometres from my home because I chose not of to course. get vaccinated. There were all these things, but it seems to be that, oh, the police can't do things when things well, like the this thing, But the thing is, not only... But the, the police were specifically granted these powers by Maurice Yemmer when he was mm. Premier of New South yeah. Wales in the wake of the Cronulla riot. So police, had, They've got police had specific powers granted to them just a decade, a little over a decade ago, mm. Mm. precisely so for, for violent yeah. riots. Yeah. And, and he and gave they them a brand new and... water cannon just to sweeten the deal. And, and so just went and, to, and none if the hippies are bast. I mean, this is supposed to be a $22,000 fine if you organise an unlawful protest mm. in New South Wales. Um, that should have been issued on Tuesday or mm. Wednesday mm. or Thursday or Friday. Not even a slap on the wrist. Correct. Nothing. Like, yet the anti-lockdown people, they got that $22,000 fine. Yep. Remember, and I was thinking again about that to, that two way of doing things. When Nigel Farage wanted to come out here and speak, the promoters of his ticketed event got sent a bill by the New South Wales yes. Police because <laughs> police would have to turn up to repel the uh, counter-protests, yeah. right? Yep. Now, there are many things the state can do rather than just physically looking somebody in the eye, mm. throwing people in the back of paddy wagons to send the message mm. about there is a way to do this and you chose to do it differently. And also... Um, they, the behaviour in the first carry-on was, of course, deliberately antagonistic to the events of, of, of last weekend. Yeah. One week on, you can see that as we've moved from the violence of what took place last weekend to the response now, that certainly the media coverage and maybe potentially some of the, the, the emotional reaction of people while they're watching it has started to change as well. So when they jumped the gun last week in absolute rage, they ended up putting themselves two steps back. Mm. But as you can see, that what is starting to happen in Israel and everyone from, you know, God forbid, the UN, parts of the US saying, you've got a right to respond, but don't go too far. And that's where this rally was today. But that said, we're talking about it tonight because of the disgrace that was there previously. Mm. And if that goes unpunished and the police assistant commissioner says, oh, we can't stop a 1,000 people, you're telling everyone what the threshold is. Yeah. You're mm. telling yeah, everyone exactly. about the, the two-tier <laughs> yeah. system. And that's that's absurd. But, but, I mean, Liz, I, I think you and I might be um, a, a bit similar. I, I, I tend to be a free speech absolutist. And, yeah. and, and I've, I've spoken previously against the idea of, of banning things like the swastika, not because I like it, but because I figure, well, if you can ban one form of speech, then you can ban any form yeah. of speech. what's next? The cross, but, the hammer but, but and But I, I, like, I really found there? myself this week conflicted on, on that principle when you've got people en masse in a public place, one of the most iconic places in the country, the Sydney Opera House, shouting, gas the Jews, thinking to myself... Generally, I've said, well, you know, free speech is free speech, but should those people be shut down? Because, because they're, they're, they're inciting, hey, they're inciting <laughs> violence. Well, they're, they're calling for death, right? Yeah, yeah, but this is, this is what I love about freedom of speech, right? Because these people out themselves. Yes. I mean, in, in some ways, I, I've, and I've mm. argued, these rallies shouldn't be allowed to go ahead given how uh, volatile the situation is. It's still unfolding. And you know a government has completely failed its people when we have what is essentially uh, foreign wars playing out in our own streets yeah. and they do absolutely nothing about it but this is this is what we're seeing here i think if you're going to allow these rallies to continue you sure as heck better be taking notes mm. because especially every single person that was there on the monday night I think you should be deported. I don't care if you're an Australian citizen or not. You do not get to stand in front of our national and icon, I don't think we which can is very deliberate. It, that has like gone all idea. around the world and scream, gas the Jews. You are not welcome mm. here. You are not Australian. We do not subscribe to that whatsoever. You get to go now. If you're not from here, guess what? You're going back. And if you were born an Australian citizen, well, you just proved you're never going to assimilate. You do not share our values. You are not a true Australian. And we, we strip them of their citizenship if they leave our country and go somewhere and join the Taliban or whatever the case is. <coughs> we recognise them as trees and There are plenty of white Australian-born Australian socialists who love back. chanting Palestine. But would, you, would you deport them, though, Joe? No, absolutely not. No, I would put them in jail as soon as they started... Oh, 
Oh, yes, yeah, so they can live off the taxpayer dime. Brilliant, oh, you know, Joe. You, Brilliant. Because you know, there, there, pl there are plenty of white as the driven snow, overprivileged uh, student socialists who would be... In fact, there are actual... None of them are screaming <laughs> gas the Jews no, on mass. So sure. Plenty of them are screaming Palestine from the river to the sea, which is basically code... The same thing. ...wiping yeah. Israel off the map. Exactly. But again, it's not that hard. It's not that hard to say, all right... You can, you know, either A, you can protest because you've got a permit and you've ticked all the boxes and you've filled out all the forms and that's great, or B, you're not really hurting anyone and, yes, you do have a right to freedom of expression. Like the stuff we saw today, that's perfectly fine. Bit icky, bit off-colour, but still, they're not harming anyone, so let them be free. But the minute you are actually deliberately targeting a symbol of Israel while chanting, kill the Jews... That's, nothing, their that's flag. nothing to do with free speech. That is pure and simple incitement to violence. It is incitement to murder. And, and again, it is convenient that you've got footage of these people and you can, you know, kick ass and take names. Well, but let's hope that they is, are. That is, as Ezio, Ezio, where said, are you? There's Ezio. your crime right there, <laughs> officer. This, this, is, this is the problem that I find as well, though, because there, what we have to remember is that Hamas, who are the ones who started this... They're a terrorist organisation. Mm. They are. They're, they're recognised as that. Um, there are certain countries around the world who, like, it's including it's, ours. That's right. It, it's it's that. But what we have to remember is that whilst everybody who is a member of Hamas is a terrorist, not everybody who is in Palestine yes, is a member correct. of Hamas. Yeah, absolutely and correct. so when there are people on, on the street, that's why I went back to the question, what are they there for? If they're yeah, saying, uh, yeah. please, can, can we send hum humanitarian aid to the innocent Palestinians who, Largely are, today, that's who what were they caught were up in yeah, there? Sure. I'm all for that. That is, I think that they have a right to protest that, and I think it's a conversation that should be had about how we respond to that. Like, how, how as human beings do we respond to a proposal of genocide of a group of people that have, have no... Uh part to play in this because if you go over to the Middle East and I've done a lot of work with, with Middle Eastern things in my line of work there are groups of people over there who have no choice they can't even they wouldn't even get five Australian dollars in their pocket mm -hmm. to be able to come over here so people go well why don't they leave they literally can't well, and I'm so with you because this is watching some of the stuff that's happened this weekend right um where oh can as many people move out of the northern part of the Gaza Strip as possible? Mm -mm. Okay, where mm. what yeah. to the four hundred thousand Airbnbs that are in the southern bit? Yeah. Not, <laughs> they not have nowhere happen, to go. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the the gates effectively locked at both at, at both ends for a multiplicity mm. of geopolitical reasons. I'm not going to bore you with, but feel free to <laughs> um, complicated. Um, but again, this is what I'm saying about the difference between, and I'm trying to to calm myself from the rage that I felt like everyone else did and I blasted away on telly about what we saw at the, at the um, Opera House and now trying to say, well, OK, right now there would be somebody who'd be living on the second floor of a unit block mm. in Gaza, mm -hmm. but because Hamas might be on the roof, if the instant response mm -hmm. is to collapse the... Yeah. It's not like the person living on the second floor can repel. That's right. Mm. But that's, Hamas, that's Hamas' Hamas strategy. The that's the whole thing. They want to provoke Israel. A hundred percent. Into of they, they do some. They start something terrible. Israel responds with twice 100%. as much force, and then they say, "Look, Israel's killed twice as many as we have. They must be twice as bad." Mm. And you talk about the refugee problem. Well, the neighbouring countries, including the ones that actually, why isn't Iran taking everyone from the Gaza? Well, Egypt won't open well, the door. <laughs> it won't. No, it won't well, let people out. Inter or interestingly, is, Egypt, I think, is trying to position itself as a peacemaker. Uh, with um, Israel. But again, these are a lot of these big Arab countries around it, the Shiite ones, for example, want the people to suffer so that Israel gets the blame for it. So, yes. again, it is a, is a really dark... You know, they're using these people as human shields. So, yes, Israel is bombing people and innocent people are being caught up in that, but that is also a deliberate part of Hamas's strategy to sacrifice mm. these people to claim the sympathy card. And that's what I found galling about people going to the protest on Monday. And today's might have been different. It but was. But if you, were, if you went was. to that protest on Monday, you were doing it in the context of what had happened over the weekend, which is... Hamas going in and slaughtering innocent Israelis and then Hamas provoking rally, a, a war. And, and you can go along and all you like say, oh, well, you know, we're doing it for free Palestine and the Palestinian people. If you went on Monday night, you sympathised with Hamas. It's as simple as that. 